You're raised as an athlete to fight back. So why all of a sudden, when you retire, do you stop the good fight? This is Finding Center with Nick Hardwick. It's just realizing time. Sometimes when you're when you when you retire or when you're playing, think about it. You act like we we have no time. Oh yeah. Uh, it's if with our kids. Oh I, man, I gotta go. I gotta go work out. We leave the wife. Oh, I gotta do this. And, hey, we gotta do this. And 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 yeah. And then and then you're like, well, at least I'm not doing. And then then you compare yourself. At least I'm not. I, I'm giving you more than what he's doing. And you know, and they're there all the time. And they're just patient. And we go, we run and around, going to the facility, got to go work out, got to go here, got to go to, hey, I'm going out of town. All these things we do. And I think it's just, I think that sometimes it's senseless. We run around chasing things and we forget about what really life is, what life is meant for, what life is really about. But we can get so caught up in everything that's going around, especially when we're in that game and we're in our season. Think about what we do. We say, oh, I'm only going to have one kid. I'm only going to have two kids because, oh, financially, I want to be here. And then when we get older, you're like, man, who's going to take care of you? Life, it is such a wonderful experience. And without health, we can't enjoy all that it has to offer. If you haven't heard, our family has a new supplement line with our name on it. We are so proud. Check us out at hardwick.life. It's like hardwick.com, but instead of .com, it's .life. We have been taking these exact pharmaceutical-grade supplements for several years now. We are waiting on our shipping and fulfillment process to get up to the quality and the standard that we expect and that you expect. And now it's on point, and we can't wait for you to try. We love the enhanced immunity they offer all of us. I put my body through the ringer with football. I love knowing that I'm doing everything in my power today to ensure that I'm giving myself the best chance possible to live that fulfilling life along with my family. Check out, check out these pharmaceutical-grade products and new family-friendly recipes posted all the time, both on our Instagram and online at hardwick.life. Hardwick.life, foundational elements for a fulfilled life. Check them out. You guys know this. If you follow my stories on Instagram, at Nick Hardwick, you better be following along. What are you doing? Then you already know I post almost every meal that I eat. I do that to show that health, maintaining a fit and active body and lifestyle, it's not a trick. It's just consistently making really good choices. One choice I've made almost every single morning since 2017 when this company was founded, Bubs Naturals Collagen Protein and MCT Oil Powder. One way or another, I've used them religiously almost daily. I swear by it. You're going to love it. Super good. No other collagen brand can claim to be 100% NSF certified. If you are in the San Diego area, products are now available at all Barron's markets. Stop in, pick some up today. See how conveniently health can fit into your life. I love it in a coffee. I also love it. I make this really nice green tea, a matcha green tea latte. It is absolutely fabulous. Put a little protein in there, a little MCT oil, and then they got this little whisk stick. It's perfect. If you don't have a Barron's near you or you don't want to go to the store right now, totally get it. Order it online at bubsnaturals.com. You can also check out their blog for creative recipes recipes at bubsnaturals.com. Use the code, check this out. They're up in the ante, Hardwick 20, Hardwick 20 for 20% off your order. All right, guys, joining us today in our new segment called Lessons from Legends on the Finding Center podcast. My good buddy, my former teammate, a guy I looked up to, it's the legend Lorenzo Neal. So Lo Neal needs no introduction, especially to my Charger fans out there. But here's one anyway for the rest of you. Lo was a fullback in the NFL for 16 seasons. Goodness Ow. gracious. Oh, he played college football for the Fresno State Bulldogs, drafted by the Saints in the fourth round of the 93 draft. He was a four-time Pro Bowl selection, a three-time, and this is awesome, all-pro. He was a member of the Jets, the Bucks, the Titans, the Bengals, the Chargers, the Ravens, and the Raiders. And he's widely considered one of the best blocking fullbacks in NFL history. He was a part of the NFL's all-decade team for the 2000s. And this is an awesome stat. Neil Block for a 1,000-yard running back in 11 straight seasons from 97 to 2007. And one last note, because you guys know this about me, I love wrestlers. He was an NCAA All-American wrestler as well at Fresno State. Let's bring him on. It's my good friend, Lorenzo Neal. Low Daddy, how are you, buddy? 
I am great, Nick. You're always the man, the myth, the legend. You always will be. And it's great to see. I love this little Zoom. We're looking at one another. You're still looking great, nice and lean and, and, and uh, pretty in the face and slim in the waist. I'm doing great. That's always the key, isn't it? That was the thing. <laughs> one of the phrases that you always used to throw out. Slim in the waist, Absolutely. pretty in the pretty face. In, no question, brother. For life. That's how we'll do it, right? <laughs> and you, Oh, that is exactly it. So just read the stats off. You led the way for a thousand yard rusher in 11 straight seasons. Some of the greats of the game, Warwick Dunn, Eddie George, Corey Dillon. And let's not forget about the great, great LaDainian Tomlinson. What do you yes. think your strength is or was that allowed you to have the level of success that you did? Yeah, Nick, that's a great question. I think the biggest thing was just heart and determination and desire. Uh, there was a, you know, a coach always told me, one of my coaches, I don't know if it was Marty or, or it was uh, Fisher, and he said the will to win means nothing without the will to prepare. The will to win means nothing without the will to prepare. I took that to heart, and I said, wow, and that was one. And then the second one that I, I heard another guy say, you know, my, Jim Sweeney, he said, you know, I got the will to win means nothing without the will to prepare. But then Jim Sweeney, my college coach, said, he said, working will, wishing won't. Working will, wishing won't. You can work all, you can wish. Well, I wish I had a million. But if you don't get it, what is it? You can, this is a wish. You have to work. And those two things I took, and I said, if I can apply those to my craft, to my career, it will, I think that I'm going to have some success. Because if I know if I'm working, and I have a working will and wish you won't. If I work, it will happen. Because faith without hope, faith without works is dead. You got to have, you know, you got to believe that you're going to be successful. And if you don't have the will to win, you know what? If you don't have the will to win, it means nothing if you don't prepare. So those two things, they just, you know, resonated with me. And I'm like, wow. And then, you know, that book that I love to read, the Bible, you know, talking about faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. That's what, that's what drove me to knowing that, you know what, that no matter what, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to stay in it. Wrestling background, being from a small town, there's so many things that drove me to say that I'm going to be a dominant and a great player because I knew if I keep working and keep pushing, great things would happen. Well, where did that heart, determination, and desire come from? You think it was innate? Were you born with it? Or is it something that kind of developed in you over the years? I think I think you have to be a little bit blessed and born with it. I think one and two, I was blessed with it. And three, I think that my I think the most of all, of course, one was creation, which is God. I believe that gave me that ability. But my parents, my dad, you know, when you're growing up in a small little town, I'm in a you know small little town called Lee Moore, California, and uh, we didn't even have a stoplight growing up, Nick. No stoplight. You know, I'm a form you boy, have a stop country sign? boy. We, we, we did have a couple stop signs. So, That's good. So, progress. So, yeah, yeah, it was progress. <laughs> now, hey, Nick, now we got a McDonald's. We got a Burger King. It's a lot oh, of shade. No. So, yes, we're, we're, we're moving on up. Remember the Jeffersons? Moving on up. <laughs> Fish don't fry in the kitchen. Beans don't burn on the grill. Shoot. But we here now <laughs> just oh. to get up that hill. Da -da. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I just had a moment there. But, uh, you know, so just being from a small town, understand, uh, the, understanding the importance of hard work. Getting up every day at four or five o'clock in the morning, going to feed animals. We had farm animals, milking cows, uh, giving calves the, the bottles. You have to give them the bottles when they get off the mom because the ground's cold. They'll die. So you got to put them in their little cage. You know, they get the scows. You got to give them a pill and milk them, give them a bottle, hand feed them, uh, you know, slopping pigs. I do that every morning, brother. I would get up at four or five in high school, go do that for two hours, come home, take a shower friggin' go to school, go to practice, come home that night, feed them again, then try to get some homework in. So those things every day. This wasn't, this wasn't no day off. On Friday night, Nick, I would, I'd run for 150 yards, average over 100 yards a game. I averaged 16 tackles a game. And you know what? My dad, instead of getting up at 4 o'clock, he'd be at 7.30, rise and shine. No pigs don't care how many yards you ran for. Boy, get up. <laughs> 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 so yeah so big dream awesome. kept me going yeah so i think those are some of the things nick that i don't think i had a i don't think i had an option uh not to want to work hard yeah. and uh, that's why today we're talking and i'm 
out cutting my mom's yard. I'm out and uh, doing some work at, here in here in the Central Valley down a little more. I'm, I'm out here grinding right now, brother. You know, I think it's one of the common threads that a lot of really successful people have is that they've got a huge capacity to be able to handle work and, yeah. and to not yeah. only handle it, but to really enjoy it and to have found a way early in life to go, this is life, work is part of it, and it has to get done and nobody's going to do it but me. And I really do think like that growing up on a farm and having that built into you and, and understanding that this work has to get done by someone and you look around then you go well it's that someone is me Absolutely, and, and that's Nick. that's led to so much success it's just that giant capacity that you have to be able to handle a workload isn't it interesting though nick we both have kids and my son's going what he's going he's at your alma mater purdue and he's an hour up the up, road yeah bowler uh, bowler up hammer down right and uh yeah, that's right. down there in lafayette and and just to watch kids and I imagine your father would probably say the same thing that just we don't know and I, th I thought I worked hard my dad said you have nothing like we you had it nothing like us and then my son the same each generation has gotten softer has gotten more intelligent I get that and that's one thing that you got to be happy right. about that they're going to be smarter than us so they've gotten a lot more intelligent than us but at the same sense they lost that self of they lost that sense of urgency They've yeah. lost that sense of just pride in, you know, picking up the trash, pride in making up your bread, pride in going out and, and not, don't have to tell someone, don't, no one has to tell you to go cut the grass. We now, we live in a world, bro, that, and it's, and it's our fault. And that's why I hope this gets out and hope parents look at, you know, talk, to, you know, listen at this side, listen to us today is because think about it. We've lost that. Our kids, they don't know it. They, 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 some of them have never even cut the grass. They don't even know what a lawnmower feels like to push it. And, but yet and still, they want the new car. Yet and still, they want you to do those things. I told my son, always growing up, I said, I took him to the bank one day. He was 12, and he said, Dad, I just want this and want that. And I said, I said, go in there. Drove up to Wells Fargo. I said, go in there and ask him for 50 bucks. Go in the bank and ask for 100 bucks. No, why not? Because uh, uh, I said, go in there and ask for 100 bucks. But that's what's going in there. No, what? Because I don't have an account. I said, what deposits are you going to make? I said, you guys always want withdrawals. You want this, you want that, but are you gonna make deposits? Are you making deposit in other people's lives? Are you making deposit in your home? Are you making deposit in your walk? Are you making deposit in the weight room? Are you doing those things? And he gets older and all, and even now in life, I'm like, look, you know, you've been blessed. You've been blessed with this great body. They talk about you getting drafted. But I said, you remember all the years that I've told you in the weight room, doing all those things, because natural ability will take you so far. Then it comes down to how many deposits, what you put into the weight room, how many times you did those burpees, how many times you did the neck, the squats, all those different things. You've seen it, Nick. I've seen it. Some of these guys so athletic, but they didn't make the deposits in the weight room. And when they required their body to give them out of trouble and do certain things, they had one, two, three year careers. Jesse Chapman, all these guys that had an opportunity yeah. to play years in the league, but because they didn't put the deposits in, take care of their body, work out the right way. They didn't get the withdrawal that they had. And that's what I try to do now, Nick. There's so many deposits that I could have done more. There's so many things that I think I go back in life and, and I say, I would change. I'd be a better man. I'd be a better father. I'd be a better husband. I'd be a better player. There's so many other things that I can do and we can't go back. That's the thing. And that's what people have to realize. This is it. We only get one shot at this. Take advantage of the opportunity. Like you're talking about, work, just do it. No one else going to do it. If it is to be, it's up to me. If it is to be, it's up to me. Every morning, I try to get up, say my prayers, do it, and I get it, look in the mirror and say, if it is to be, it's up to me. That's in sports. That's in all the time. That was something that I would always do, something at an early age. If it is to be, it's up to me. And that's, that's, that's life. Anything you want. If it's going to happen, it's going to have to come from within. It's going to have to come from you. How are you going to, the deposits and things that you put into yourself, as far as education, stability, all those things that you put into yourself is going to lead to success. Lo, take me back for a minute. You said we can't go back, but take me back in your memory for a minute and reflect on your career. What are some of the key moments you remember? And not necessarily the moments of triumph or the moments of failure, but when you think back on your career, what are those key moments for you? I, you know what? 
I think some of the key moments is for me is I, I would I think I would I would have for one I think I would have played linebacker I, if I if I could go back in time I would have stayed on defensive side of the ball I I really believe that I, no it, kidding it, I, no I mean yeah. I, it, I, I had a knack for you know just being around the ball and I went to Fresno State and that's what I, they wanted me as a uh, linebacker. Um, and Jim Sweeney, because Aaron Craver was going to the pros, he said, we need him on offense. So it was just, I was like, whatever. So I just went and <clears throat> played offense because I played in college, high school as well. But if I, if I, I think that what I reflect back on is there's moments. When I got drafted to the Saints, uh, you know, had a great, having, starting off having had 100 yards, the second game had over 100 yards in the first half and broke my ankle. I think that moment there was one of the defining moments. And I remember to Coach Moore saying, look, look, you, you're not, you know, and I came back the next year, wasn't as quick, just couldn't cut it. He goes, look, you may not play this position running back and carry the ball as much. He said, man, but I'm telling you, if you work and you stay committed to fullback and you do this the way, because I've seen what you have, he said, you can play 10, 12 years. He said, you have that type of mind. You have that type of body. You're that tough. You're a tough guy. And – I ran with it, and those, that was one of those defining moments that I remember like yesterday. Jim Moore called me in his office. It's me and him sitting up there, the head coach, and he was just saying, look, you have ability. You can be greater than what you think. And, you know, I was frustrated, still out partying and doing something. He just like, I'm telling you, don't let the opportunity. You can, you can play a long time if you stay the course. And uh, it's crazy. I remember that like yesterday, and that was one of those 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 aha moments that I was like, okay, okay. Um, there are so many moments that I have, uh, you know, just from 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 communicating with coaches, from from just what did I do in off seasons that what would I have changed, you know, some of the different regiments maybe I would have done, um, how would I have taken the game differently now? Uh, I go back in time and I'm like, if we knew what we knew now, Nick, if you and I, and we had a crystal ball. And we could go back to the Chargers. How many Super Bowls do you think we don't really want? Oh man! If just if just you and I were on the same page and know what we know now and knew the ability as far as leaders, mm -hmm. and how many times you would have said, "Low, man, look, man, we're so close. Listen, you need to get those running backs. You, hey, look, grab those guys over there. Do what, if you knew and we knew if we knew what we knew now, with the talent and the ability that that team had, you tell me we wouldn't have won at least several Super Bowls. Oh yeah. Just, just two, yeah, we just were, two guys. We were right just, there. Just two men. So those are some of the things that I go back and change, Nick. And I, and and that the point that I'm making. That's just you and I. That's not a bunch of guys. Two guys. If just if we would, if we knew what we knew now, that's the kind of sphere of influence you and I could have had on that whole locker room. An interruption once again. So while you're waiting this out at home with us, you can still have some fun betting online. Check out my friends at betonline.com. How long do you want to bet this COVID-19 quarantine lasts? I don't know, a month, 45 days, 60 days? What are we looking at? I know no March Madness or any of your leagues, but betonline.com still has hundreds of places to wager their online casino with poker and blackjack, and sports aren't totally done. There's still mixed martial arts, American Idol, the elections, the spelling bee, Nathan's hot dog eating contest. There's still fun to be had, so go to betonline.com. Use the promo code MYPOD100. That's MYPOD, P-O-D, 100 to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's right. For our listeners, 50% off with the promo code MYPOD100, betonline.com. The fun never ends. Yeah. Well, give me your, your greatest accomplishment, and then I'll ask you for your greatest failure or your, your biggest learning moment. You know, I, I think the greatest accomplishment is, is, is – is being being where I'm at now, um, being 49 years old. I shouldn't be here. The life that I've lived, I mean, yeah, I was a great person, good guy, but I mean, reckless, careless, fearless. And the biggest accomplishment is being here now. And my dad's been gone out for four years. And the accomplishment now is is trying to keep the name in the family, the Neil family, having kids and and seeing. And, and, and not knowing the future, not knowing who's going to pick up the mantle, not knowing who's, who, you know, who's, who's there. And so I think the biggest accomplishment now is just to, to be where I'm at this age, this stage, 
in spite of my imperfections, in, in spite of my failures. But God has me here for a reason. And my, big, my accomplishment that it's not done yet is to bring my family closer, to let us know that it's not about us. It's about how do we serve? How do we serve one another? And how do we do it in a good place? How do we serve in a place that we're, we're trying to help one another and not trying to kill one another? We can give life. We can give death. Just with words. The tongue. Words that we say can give life or death. It can determine, it can determine whether our kids are going to be successful. It can determine if they're going to be a failure. So my accomplishment, my biggest accomplishment is this being still present. You know, you got, we got guys, you know, that Nick, Junior Seau, yeah. Terrence Kill, you know, the list goes on. That's right. That's gone. That's gone. Life is a, life is a, life is a treasure. Oh, it's a God, blessing. Is it? Yeah. When do, do you feel at peace? And I guess like, you know, thinking about transitioning out of the NFL, how long did it take you to, to transition to where you're at now? It took, no, me, it, it, it took me all of five years. Like, yeah. And I feel like this was my fifth season out, and I feel completely like everything I do is just me now. And, and yeah. I just feel completely settled and at ease. It, you, you know, it, it, yeah, it took, me, it took me some years, Nick. It took me at least five years. And you just, you see something that you was a part of. And, you, you know, you, you were revered. And it almost, it, you, it's almost surreal when you're playing. You know that. Oh yeah. It's not like it's not like you're it's not like you it's like you're in the world but you're not part of the world. That's you feel right. like you're a gla- you feel like you're a gladiator. You feel like man it's a different walk. It's a different confidence. It, it's like when you know you, you you know that when you walk into a stadium and they holler your name, Nick, Lo, and you walk in and you just give them a look because you know what you're getting ready to do. You get ready to go try to take someone's soul. You get ready to go try to lay hands on people. And that, that, that feeling of just power, that feeling that you know that you can give, that you know that you're getting ready to get in the battle, man, it just gave those juices. You knew after the game, people are going to talk to you. You didn't have a regular job. We don't have to go in and punch a clock nine to five. We're, it's, it's like we're going to work and we're going to be around a bunch of brothers being in that locker room, being That's around so many guys. It's so unique. Yeah. It's an experience, man, that you just like, you long for and you long for you got to realize nick since think about it you played seventh eighth grade sixth grade all this time high school college you've been told here's your classes this is what you're doing told when to catch on the bus get on the bus here's what the meeting time is in the nfl you good up you boom have an itinerary tell you what time you got to be there what time you got to go on the bus if you needed a passport if you need to go to a doctor front of the line we make a call things are done it's not a real world yeah that's right and man, and then you like, man, you go and you're like, oh my God. And then all of a sudden it's done. And it's not the crash to kill you, it's the sudden stop. <laughs> and boom, you wake up, you're like, man, it's, it's over. And you're like, where'd the time go? But in that season, guys just don't understand what it really means. And you think you do. Yeah. But we really you, don't. You think you're appreciating <laughs> it, but you, but you can't because you don't know what's to come. <laughs> oh. Lo, this is biggest, this is fun. Biggest, biggest learning lesson. Biggest, biggest to, moment. Yeah, go ahead. You know what? I have, I have so many, bro, learning moments that sometimes, you know, sometimes, sometimes you have those learning moments and sometimes you look at them and you say, you know what? Ah, it's okay. No, it's not. And I think I, I have learning moments all the time. I think there's lonely moments you can get every day if you want them. Um, one for me is I knew that things were just different. And a learning moment at high school. I was, uh, went to Lamar High School, great place. Best friend, Matt, you know, Matt, of course. Matt Mahoney, my yeah. buddy, Matt. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Great guy. So, you know, we, we go to high school together. We're, you know, we're frigging pretty much I live at his house he lives at my house all through high school we, you know we wrestle together you know he, he you know he wrestles only a year just doesn't like it we football you name it we did it. We train together you know in so our senior year I make uh you know our senior I make first team all league he makes first team all league I make the player of the league MVP of the league 
and then I'm and then I'm Central Section Player of the of the of 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 of, of the league, and then I'm Valley Player, you know, I'm All Valley Athlete of the Year, and then I'm Northern California Player of the Year, and then I'm California. Janet Evans said Janet's the queen, Lorenzo's the king. Janet Evans, uh, you know, tennis player, Michael Chan, Chan, tennis player. I beat out Michael Chan, Curtis Conway, Quincy Watts, all these greats wow. back in the day. So Lorenzo's the king, Janet's the queen. Um, she won the Olympics in swimming. So we're both cal- male. I was the male. She was the female athlete of the year. And then at Lamore High School, how about I don't even get Tiger of the year? I, I lose the Matt Mahoney. So I'm like, <laughs> I, I was so hot. I, I'm not mad at him, of course, but I was so hot, bro. You know, and I looked and I said, you know, that sucker. And, you know, because me and him, were, you know, we're boys. I said, oh, yeah. the only reason you got, as only reason you got it, you white. You know that. You know you got no better than me. He's like, he says, all right, baby. It has its purpose. So I that, and so me, and, and, and the great thing about it, it was my best friend. So, we, you know, we still business together and, you know, partners together. We bought real estate together. You know, you, he and I were still buddies. So it's like, you know, you look at certain things and that was a moment that it was a teaching moment. It was a moment that you say, okay, certain times and certain times and certain places, there's going to be haters. Haters are going to hate. How do you learn in the midst of your hate? How do you learn? What do you take away when, in, when, when you're in a storm and the, and the storm is, is going and, and, you, and, and your ship is just being tossed to and fro? Who's your anchor? Who is your anchor? What are you, what are you, what are you those times when things are dark or, or things that don't go your way, and you you know you you feel like giving up whether you you know you're not just that but just a lot of things in life that you may have a mishap you know you you know you make a bad decision you do some things and you just and you're in a storm who are you then who are you and and and, and, and you know and, and I and I tell I tell my son I said son he's like he aspires to play in the next level and I said here's the thing I said I played for you know the Chargers said when I when I was in you know played with the Saints I said on the you know the front of the jersey it had Saint the back of the jersey it had Neil I said you know I went to the you know played for the Jets and front of the jersey it has Jets the back had Neil you know and then I said you go on the list in Tampa Bay I was a pat on the side of the helmet Buccaneer but on the back of the jersey it said Neil and it, you felt good about it and the Chargers in the back and the light had the lightning bolt Charger and then on the back it had your name and so on and forth and then I, I told him I said one day though it was a knock and they're gonna take that jersey away from you now you no longer have that name only name you have is no longer on the back of jersey it's just you just have your name Neil how is your name what are you going to do because they're gonna take that jersey one day son I know you're at Purdue I know you want to play all those different things it's gonna be a time and then who are you are you being a good person are you loyal I talk about leadership Loyalty, education, accountability, discipline, respect, service, honesty, all those, all those acronyms, you know, people want to be a, they want to be a leader first. We're talking about leaders. They want to be a leader first. But if you ain't loyal, how can you be, you got to have those adjectives, you loyal, educated, I mean, you know, all those different things you need to do, accountable, all these things that have to be done first in order to be a leader. So those are some of the things, Nick, that, you know, that I reflect on. That's, it's incredible. Who was your greatest influence or mentor and what did they give you? Uh, you know what? I, I think a great influencer for me, it has to be my father, Glenn, big Glenn, rest in peace. My dad my passed, you know, five years ago and uh, four years ago, rather. And he was just, man, tough. He was, I mean, this dude, yeah. he just, he made me. He made me believe that I can walk into a room. He didn't tell, he told me no one can be, I didn't think that I could lose. If he was there, something he would do and how he would just talk to me, the life that he spoke into me. I mean, this dude had me in combat boots, brother, running in the field, running because we're, you know, we got land and talking about distance in the field after you turn over the ground, it's powdery. It's, you know, it's really soft. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm running, in. yeah, I'm running in boots out there. I mean, this guy, you know, my dad was, you know, big man, 300 pounds. He couldn't run with me. He'd get in the truck and say, come on, let's go. And I'd have to run behind the truck. And run. He's, 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 just that push, man. Yeah. That, that, that push and just watching him and, you know, watching his struggle and watching him just, you know, you know, just take, you know, take initiative. And no matter what was around him, 
to be successful. That those those are he was he was a great man. And then breathe in the confidence into you too. Yes, it's, it's it's the push, it's the expectations, but then giving you the confidence to right. go ahead and live up to those expectations. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Lo, Lo, since retirement, what what behavior or habit has most improved your life? I, I think the biggest thing, Nick, is is just realizing time. Sometimes when you're when you when you retire or when you're playing, think about it. You act like we we have no time. Oh yeah. Uh, it's if with our kids. Oh, I, man, I gotta go. I gotta go work out. We leave the wife. Oh, I gotta do this. And hey, we gotta do this. And 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 yeah. And then and then you're like, well, at least I'm not doing. And then then you compare yourself. At least I'm not. I, I'm giving you more than what he's doing. And you know, and they're there all the time. And they're just patient. And we go. We running around. I'm going to the facility. Gotta go work out. Gotta go here. Gotta go to. Hey, I'm going out of town. All these things we do. And I think it's just, I think that sometimes it's senseless. We run around chasing things and we forget about what really life is, what life was meant for, what life is really about. But we can get so caught up in everything that's going around, especially when we're in that game and we're in our season. Think about what we do. We say, oh, I'm only going to have one kid. I'm only going to have two kids because, oh, financially, I want to be here. And then when we get older, you're like, man, who's going to take care of you? We, we, uh, we, we've been putting on this earth to have children and do these things and, and, and be fruitful and multiply, do those things and have a clan, have family that on Christmas, you know, think about you 60, 70 years old, you got, you got five kids or four kids coming back with their other ones, grandkids, and it's a house full and you sit and say, this is my offspring. Sometimes we look at it because when we're in our moment, we're in our season, it's about us. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm thinking about this. And we're just running and running and running. And we forget what time really is. And it's not really our time. It's not ours. And we go so fast. We go so hard. We're so caught up in everything else about us. It becomes about us that we don't slow down and actually really appreciate the things that we can. I think now when you retire, there's time to, just do nothing. Okay, you yeah. sit down, okay, you sit and you just think, okay, how am I gonna get here? What do I really need to do? Am I gonna pick up the phone? Am I gonna call my brother or call my sister and, and, and make it right or, or call a cousin or call someone like, man, hey man, how are you? We go so fast, man, we get, and, and we take it as for granted. And then all the time we're rushing the whole time and, and we don't have, and we feel that we don't have enough time, but no, we choose and we prioritize and we make it like we don't have time. We have time if you do it the right way. So I think in retirement, it's helped me just like realize, man, to enjoy it. Enjoy it. This is, this is a yeah. gift. It's a gift, Nick. It's a gift. That's right. All right. Got two more for you, Lo. What I got asked this the other day and I thought it was a great question. I guess everybody kind of has their own version of it. You talked about toughness, your dad giving you that toughness. What's mental toughness to you? I think, I think mental toughness is getting up mentally, man, getting up, just getting up in adverse times. Mental tough is doing something over. It's you think how many interceptions you think Tom Brady, threw? how many, they say Steph, they said Steph Curry is the best three point shooter that ever shot the ball. Right. How many misses has he has? Oh, how yeah. many times mentally tough man is saying, you know what? Okay, I got mentally tough is when you stare in, the, in the, when you're in the midst of your, your, you know, whatever you're in, not in a good time, not when you, okay, okay, that's my son. He wants to race me. You know, you can beat him. Or it's, it's okay, I got a layup over here or, or what have you. This is some mentally tough is when you don't feel that if you look and it's like, it's no way this can pose to happen. But you know, you know what? No, Nick, no way. No way, no Nick. That's what it's about. Mentally tough is like when others say, man, it can't be done. Mentally is saying, I'm going to do it. That is the mental part that separates good from great. And then great from elite. There are certain things, there's different the levels, man, that, you know, that people look at hurdles and say, man, I don't tell Lord, Lord, don't remove my mountain, but give me, give me, give me strength that I may climb over. You know, so sometimes we, we get mentally is those, is those tough times. Nick, that's what mental, you're talking about what is mental toughness? It's when things are odds and everything's are against you. And no matter what, even when you at, at when, even when you're at adverse situations, you still persevere through it. I love it. That's 
It's about as good of an explanation as you could possibly give. If you have a motto, what would it be? If I had a motto, what would it be? Well, my motto would be, you know, there's, if you're talking about just a model, uh, just, you know, my model's you, Nick. How about that? I'd follow your, I'd follow, I'd, I'd follow no, not, your, I'd follow, not, not a model. Like, you're not, not, a, not, not a model. Not Give, you're not, not, you're a, not, model. So, not you, a model. Not a model. A motto. M-O-T-T-O. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? It, it would be more like, I think my motto is, uh, you know, it's simple. You know, we all say it. Hard work pays off. I think it'd be just uh, when I, I think the model, I think that everyone, I think that everyone that's out there and they're listening and being, have an opportunity to, to listen. I think a lot of our model in general should be, how do I serve? And I understand, I understand people say, okay, what's the model? My model is, you know, I'm work hard. I'm gonna do all those things. Yeah. And my model is like, you know, do things. But I, I think a model that, especially where we're at now with the Corona, all the stuff that's going on, how do we serve? And it doesn't have to be financial. It doesn't have to be all these elaborate things. And how do I serve? How do I bring life to people? That's, a, I think everyone should have that model. How can I serve and be a better human being? Lo, well, you're the best, buddy. No, I miss you, you are. man. I hey, miss I love you. you, man. Hey, I love, I can talk to you all the time. We, gotta, we need to do, hey, we ought we to do this more often, brother, because I enjoy it, brother. I enjoy I, this. I love to catch up. I love to pick your brain. I just, I love being around you because you got such good energy. Oh, thank you. You're the best, brother. Love you, man. Call me soon. Let's check up. Check in we'll with do, you. We'll do, Lo. Love you, man. Right, hey, brother. thanks so love much you. for the time again. Thanks for letting me join your show. Cheers. All right. Bye, buddy. Bye-bye.